I have a mnemonic that's going to help you remember the three physical exam findings for Beck's triad. Let me start off by saying you can't rely on these three physical exam findings to diagnose tamponade. One or two of these things alone is not sensitive or specific enough, and all three of these together are only present in about 10% of patients with pericardial tamponade. And those patients, they're very hypotensive and periarrest. So if the thought crosses your mind that the patient in front of you might have tamponade, you better have the ultrasound machine in the room and the probe on the chest and rule it out at the bedside. And I bet you right now someone's in the comments saying, oh, you're so elitist. Not everyone knows how to use ultrasound. I'm just going to use my physical exam finding. If you don't know how to use ultrasound, it's because you haven't taken the initiative to learn it yet. Medicine evolves and you have to learn how to evolve with it too, especially if you're taking care of critically ill patients. Anyway, on to the mnemonic for Beck's triad. It is JVD. The first sign is jugular venous distension. When you have pericardial tamponade, there's a decreased feeling of blood return to the heart. So if there's a backup of flow on the right side of the heart causing JVD. The next part of the mnemonic is V for very low blood pressure. I know it's a stretch, but it makes mnemonic work. Hypotension is another sign of pericardial tamponade part of Beck's triad. And the D is for distant or muffled heart sound. When you have a heart that's surrounded by fluid, it insulates sound from getting out to your stethoscope. And that's the reason why you have muffled heart sounds in tamponade. Remember that mnemonic for Beck's triad, JVD, jugular venous distension, very low blood pressure, and distant heart sounds. Although the three physical exam findings of pericardial tamponade can be difficult to remember, 